information cannot be avoided, isn't it? Um, some will say, easy. It's called capitalism. And the discussion might end there. But I, I, I really think it's way more. Because than that. until a few years ago, we used to see robots looking like that. But now companies are starting to show us their futuristic projects, like uh, Boston Dynamics with their robots Atlas and Spot. Manuela Veloso, an AE roboticist from Mellon University in Pillsburg, said People will have to understand that this is not science fiction. It's not something that will start to happen in 20 years from now. It started to happen. And this scares me a little bit. The fact that technology has become cheaper allowed robots to become prolific. They are becoming mobile. They have a, a better AE. Better sensors, for instance, a company called Syntouch is developing uh, robotic fingertips for detecting sensations and bigger brains because cheaper processors led to a better data analytics on board on the robot's machine learning system. And then scientists started to think, what if you let the machine to change its own algorithm? And they started to study how you can automate that alteration in order to obtain a better algorithm, one that human cannot design. They should be able to go out and collect their own experience. Through that experience, gain an understanding of the world. And if something goes wrong, they can just collect more experience and fix it. So in the same way that uh, you might imagine that a child plays with things in the world, this is what we heard about in the last talk as well, uh, acquiring an understanding of how that world works, our machines should be able to do the same. And, if they're able, and I think ultimately that's going to be the recipe to build autonomous agents like robots that can actually generalize in meaningful ways. So what we need is to make it possible for these uh, systems to essentially improve perpetually through their experience. And that's, of course, a lot easier said than done. So the trouble is that the world is full of these exceptions and special cases, like the different kinds of shoes. There's not really any simple parsimonious policy that will just do everything. So what, and the mistakes are inevitable. So even the best system will fail sometimes. And if you want a system that will actually generalize in a meaningful way, you can't avoid the mistakes. What you could do is you could have intelligent autonomous agents that keep gathering more experience and keep improving so that when they make the mistakes, they can prevent, uh, they can fix them, they can prevent making those mistakes again. And this is the beginning of starting developing artificial intelligence. UC Berkeley Lab uh, had a project in which they succeed to make the robot to teach himself how to complete uh, children puzzles. And Google researchers used videos of a dog to program a simulated dog, then use reinforcement learning to make a four-legged robot to behave like a dog. And more and more voices start to say that robots needs to become more self-sufficient. At this point, artificial intelligence is starting to touch new heights. For instance, Patrick Kingston, which is an MIT professor, is talking about algorithms enabled by constraints, exposed by representations that support models targeted at loops, which tie thinking, perceptions, and actions together which means that researchers are exploring four different approaches uh, thinking humanly, acting humanly, thinking rationally, acting rationally. In this context, Data Robot, a CEO Jeremy Aiken said, artificial intelligence is a system able to perform tasks that ordinarily require human intelligence. Many of these artificial intelligence systems are powered by machine learning. Some of them are powered by very boring things, like rules. 
like rules. Wait, uh, what? But let's go back a little bit to Veloso's statement. People will have to understand that this is not science fiction, it's not something that will happen in 20 years from now, it's starting to happen. Because she is right. Because more and more businesses around the world are becoming automated. More and more entrepreneurs are starting to thinking, and I quote an article, robots are the perfect co-worker. They never go tired, they never go sick, and, and they can do dull and dangerous work. Ben Wolf, uh, the CEO of Sarkos Robotics, said, uh, in a world that now fears human contact, it won't be easy to fill jobs. Even in a high unemployment rate, you can't snap your fingers and fill jobs that need highly specialized skills. And Ati Heina, uh, co-founder of Skype and chief at Starship Technologies, uh, I don't know if you heard of him, but you might have heard about the self-driving uh, robots from Milton Keynes. This company is uh, responsible for providing all that technology. He's saying that the workplace of future is an ecosystem of robots and humans working together in order to maximize efficiency. But let's stop the discussion and let me tell you about the motivation behind this video. Let's go back. just read an article and with just one phrase uh, they succeed to raise so many questions in my mind let me tell you in order to IE reach its potential they need to be put in a human body wait what are we creating a new species Are we facing a social realignment? Will machine grow advanced enough in order to make humanity obsolete? Are we humans ready to get along with machines? How fast can we adapt in automation's ability to take jobs overnight?